Welcome to 403 Forbidden's video tutorial on Auto IT Scripting, Part 6.1. In Part 6, I was just going over how to create and show a GUI. Now, we're going to go over how to make something happen in the GUI when something is changed. Down here at the bottom is the most common method. There are two kinds of methods. One is called onEvent, and the other is not quite coming to mind. It's all in the help file here. There it is. On event mode is one of them, and message loop mode is the one that we'll be using and is the most common. In message loop mode, we use a, the combination of a while loop and a switch. What a switch is, is it has a certain variable, in this case, n message, and when that is a certain variable or line of text that follows each case, it does the code afterwards. That'll make sen more sense in another minute. Alright, so currently in our GUI, we have a label, a radio button, or a radio uh, checkbox, or whatever you want to call it, a checkbox, and a button. Right now, no matter what you do with them, nothing will happen. What we're going to do is we're going to add an entry into the while loop down here. What we're going to do is type in case and then type in the variable of what we want to have um, pushed or changed when the following code happens. In this case, we'll do the button. When the button is pushed, message box will come up. What the hey? Let's have the flag be so that we have an information sign. That's flag 64. So what will happen? When the button is pushed, is a message box will come up. Message box will come up and say, "Hello, you pushed the button." Let's see which other ones do you have here. Let's see. We also have the checkbox. Well, we'll just do the button for now. All right. So let's go over this one more time. The button, when it was created, its ID was stored in dollar sign button one. In the while loop, we have another variable here, n message end message equals GUI the, equals the value of the function GUI get message. What this does is it pulls, as it says, it pulls the GUI to see if any events have occurred, and it returns each one. It says, returns an event or an array depending on the advanced parameter. The event returned is the control ID of the control sending the message. Or it is a special event, like the window's closing, minimizing, or there's no message. The event is zero. So, as you can see, if the event is zero, that means no event happens. And then there's some, some things like GUI event close, minimize, restore, maximize, mouse move, all stuff like that. And then we won't be worrying about the advanced parameter here or anything, so we'll just leave that alone. So what this does is normally, if nothing was pushed, it will simply return zero. If something is pushed, though, it will return the ID of what got pushed. So, if we push the button, end message will become dollar sign button. Then we go into the switch. What the switch is, is it says the variable end message. If it equals GUI event close, which means the X button was hit, then exit the script. If dollar sign button was hit, which means the button was pushed, then do the following code. After that finishes, it pulls the GUI with GUI get message to see if anything's happened, but it will just return zero, so nothing will happen. Because zero is not GUI event close or button. Let's try running it. If we hit the button, end message, or GUI get message will return to end message. Button one, which means the button was pushed. In the switch, if button one is the value that end message holds, it will pop up a message box. So when we push the button, 
it pops up a message box that says you push the button. What we can do also, which is kind of interesting, is if end message equals zero, which it always will, unless something is pushed, it'll open up a message box that says nothing's going on, nothing at all. So basically, it will just always do that. You will have to have lightning quick reflexes to be able to hit a button while the message box is not open. Anyway, by the way, you can also close any script that's running by going into the taskbar and right-clicking the auto IT sign and hitting exit. But if a message box is opened, you have to push OK. Then it will close. This is how to make that is how to make a GUI. You can do many types of incredibly advanced GUIs. I'll give you an example that comes with auto IT just to daunt you. There are quite a few in here. Let's do something like this, message box wizard. It has, it's something that allows you to put in a title, text, certain icons, buttons, default buttons, and stuff like that. And then hit copy to copy the, the, um, uh, the code that you can enter into your script to allow it to work. Doesn't seem that advanced, but if you open up the script to look at the actual code, there's quite a bit in here. Hopefully, by the end of all of the tutorials that I'm doing, and by the end of you learning on your own, you'll be able to understand every bit of this. Alright, this concludes tutorials 6 and 6.1 of World 3 Forbidden's Auto IT Tutorials on Auto IT Scripting. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in tutorial number seven.